Hey YouTubers, this is the second in my series of my favorite trains, or I would call unusual trains. And you look at this and you'll say, well I've seen these before. This is a Lionel 265E, pre-war, made between 1935 and 1940. However, this has got a surprise. And some of you may remember years ago when I first obtained this set and uh, <laughs> worked on it for a week to get it to get it to go and find all the pieces, uh, missing parts. Uh, I filmed it, but you're going to see it again. And this has a surprise. Let's move it up. This is a Commodore Vanderbilt, of course. You'll see the hoagie behind it. Nice and quiet. Let's pull this back a little. And it's got an unusual tender. Doesn't have the normal tender that you would expect to see behind uh, 265e it's pulling a 261tx and I guess you could tell by the sound of my voice I'm reading it and this was the Lionel Silver Streak set it took this special tender to hook up to two beautiful Zephyr cars and these are chrome and I saw this once on a McComas uh, tape of a fellow who had a pre-war um, layout and I thought ah I would love to have those, but I'll never be that lucky. And I was that lucky because the darn thing wasn't working and the guy didn't have all the parts. So, uh, fortunately, <laughs> I got a box in the mail after I purchased it and he found all the missing parts and mailed them to me. Now, that's a good, honest eBayer. So... Let's pull up the camera back a little, give you a better view. And what Lionel did is they took this tender and they changed the uh, coupler on it to fit the Zephyr car. And we'll move the Zephyr car up, cars up, and you'll see a um, vestibule here. This vestibule is actually freestanding. If I remove these two cars, uh, simply by pushing this button, this will sit here freely on the track and roll, which is really a cool idea and you'll notice the vestibule is tapered at the end pardon me the vestibule the observation car is tapered at the end and the lights are flickering a bit and it just has these this uh, I'm trying to remember what you would call it. It looks like wax paper, but it has this type of, this is actually hard plastic uh, windows. And it's got a light bulb back here. Let's pull it back a little. Fortunately, it rolls really easy. It's got a light bulb up here, and it's got a light bulb up here. Really, they needed a couple more light bulbs. Oh, 
and it's got a very nice little Lionel insignia on the back of the tender as well and it says Lionel lines on the side of the tender itself so when I first saw this on the McComas tape I absolutely fell in love I noticed the glare's coming again that's the problem with these chrome cars but um, I thought as I, I'm repeating myself I will never ever find one of these they made it for one year only in 1935 and I have no idea how many they made in the the production itself and uh, so I expected well it's nice to look at but I'll never have one but after a lot of work I do so it's a pretty simple little train but it's something you don't see every day up until I believe about three years ago Lionel decided to re-release this and I believe uh, MTH actually had them remade in China and uh, they have three chrome cars instead of two and I assume they still call it the Silver Streak and I do not know if they have um, any kind of sound or anything like this that I do believe they do not produce smoke they may have a whistle but uh, it's they're very cool not putting them down but this is the real McCoy this is the original so let's run it oh and also this is running on uh, Lionel O track which it has 031 corners but believe it or not these long Zephyr cars will go around my 027 line which really surprised me this hoagie up here you'll see peeking around the Commodore will not there's no way that hoagie will make it around the uh, Zephyr cars pardon me around the 027 track so let's run this and let me get back a little further so you can get a better view of the whole train very quiet as was the hoagie yesterday I've got homosote on top of this layout, so all you're hearing really is the motor of the train and the clickety clack of the wheels between the uh, where the track the track joins. So this is Chrome City today. Look at that glare on top of the hoagie. <laughs> Lift it up a little higher. I've got this on a monopod. I've got a bum knee, so I usually... Oh, for some reason it stopped. I have no idea why. Well, just decided to stop. Oh, we've got a slight derailment. me to back it up a 
Look at that rear wheel on the uh, Commodore. The truck, pardon me. A little smoke there. Put it back on properly. Cycle it. And here we go again. I might have to check the uh, that rear truck because I do remember something about it riding too high for some reason. And it may be. So anyway, second in my series. Uh, very cool train. I put it right up there with the Hoagie. The Hoagie's just more unusual. But it was once again repeating myself for the third time. It was so unusual to see a Commodore Vanderbilt 265 E pulling two Zephyr cars on the McComas tape. Uh, I was completely blown away. So, this is the end of my film. Thank you for watching. And once again, this has been a Big Lizard production. Bye-bye.